I've only been here for a few weeks, so it's still I'm not um, entirely sure of the exact outcome, but I have, I have an idea. Um, so I basically my practice splits into two directions. Um, I uh, work as a functional potter, so uh, I have standard functional ranges um, as well as working on a lot of individual commissions for hospitality, interior designers, um, that kind of stuff. Um, I also uh, have got what's probably termed as a, a, a studio practice, uh, so making uh, one-off uh, pottery objects. Um, and with that kind of, those works are almost reaching a, a sculptural level, so they're kind of reaching the end of their, their functionality, so they're almost a useless functional object in themselves. Um, so for me, that's a really interesting um, kind of conceptual, functional, um, I don't know, uh, border that I like to cross backwards and forwards from. So on top of that, I also work, um, I guess I have a conceptual practice where, where uh, the works come and try and explore particular ideas, working with architectural spaces. Um, this was a work, this was an exhibition at Craft Victoria. Um, I apologise for the uh, crappy quality, but as all bad artists, I do not back up my images and then when my computer dies, I have to pull things off the internet. Um, so this was uh, a show called the Speckering Project, which Speckering is uh, German for the Hadron Collider, or the, the collider that, you know, that thing that sm so things smash together and they create this whole, whole other um, series of elements and, and, and particles. And the idea of the show was to have a whole series of basically disparate series that link together one to another and form a spider web of kind of an idea. And it was the smashing together of uh, some of the functional forms and the functional clays that I work with, um, with more conceptual, um, I guess, forms and using other materials. Uh, so those are on the right there, they're uh, uh, vessels made out of and uh, lead sheeting. Um, and sold it together, and the pieces on the left are, are just clay porcelain at the top and, and um, a dark stone layer clay on the bottom there. So in 2014 slash 15, the summer, um, I got an Australia Council um, early career residency grant, which uh, no longer exists. Um, to, and, and the idea of the grant was to go to an institute, to link up with an institution that doesn't norm, normally run art residencies. Uh, and I've always had this dream of uh, going to a historic house somewhere and being able to work in the spaces and create works influenced by those spaces. Um, so I approached Borkloos House in Sydney, which is North Shore, Sydney, probably the most Eastern beautiful suburb. Eastern suburb, sorry, that's right, other side. Um, and uh, they, they were really accommodating. So I got to work at Borkloos House. I bought a potter's wheel down there and I was there for about a month and I created works for a whole series of their rooms. I think there were probably 10 series all up, so it was, it was, they were big, it was a, it was a big project. Um, this was, oh, I also got access to um, their archives, so I got to go through all the letters, everything like bank statements. Um, Borkless House was owned uh, by uh, William Charles Wentworth, who crossed over the Blue Mountains and started Sydney Uni and the first newspaper in New South Wales, and so quite a you know, historic figure. Um, so all the works were named, oh, and he was a really crappy poet, so I got to read all his poetry. Um, so, and all the works were named 
um, from, I, I picked sentences from family letters, or this was from Wentworth's, one of Wentworth's poems, that I don't remember the name of now. So they had really long names that evoked both the archives and the history, as well as the spaces um, that the works were shown in. This was in the larder. Some of the works were purely working on just light, and so this is just light and shadow and landscape. There's no kind of um, yeah deeper thing there. Um, this was in this a sitting room, so making a whole series of um, I guess urns, vases that reference some of the forms in there, and. Uh, I think there were 12, and each one was named after each of the children that the Wentworths had. Not, obviously, not all of them survived, but they had four or something out of 12 that survived past the age of three or something. And they were dispersed throughout the sitting room. So it was quite, it was really quiet work. You wouldn't actually probably notice it unless you were walking. Because this huge room is probably like four times the size of this, this room. And they were kind of dispersed through the whole way. Um, another one of the works was um, there was this snowball vase. I'm not even using the microphone. Can anyone hear me? Yeah. Um, was this Meissen Schneeballen vase, snowball vase, which is that one. And um, for me, it was a horrendous, like this crazy, horrendous thing that they had bought back, somehow bought back from the UK in one of their trips, and it survived. There's a pair of them. Um, I was allowed to remove one of them and replace it with one of mine. I think they got about five letters of complaint. <laughs> so that they have, there's a really set number of trustees that go there every week and make sure that everything's dusted and things aren't missing. Anyway, so a few people like that were there. And so I re recreated um, a series of them, one, one of which was exhibited as kind of a burnt out, you know, crusty, dead version of these <laughs> elaborate, yeah, it's a more, bit more minimal. Less parrots, less snowballs. <laughs> How much time? Okay. Okay, so, and then uh, last year I had a show at Bus <coughs> in Collingwood. Um, and the actually I'll go to the next image. That's probably a better indication. Um, so the show was called Was in Everything. Um, I decided to take myself a little less seriously and started thinking about um, the value of objects because I work with objects all the time. I'm all constantly creating objects, whether they're just fun purely functional objects for a restaurant or you know, a sculptural or a conceptual vessel, the idea of how we value objects and how we impart value upon objects um, started to kind of, it was a niggle in the back of my mind. So I decided to, to um, put a whole bunch of random objects together that I had made specifically for the show, they weren't random objects, I guess. Um, and <laughs> it's almost like if a museum had a garage sale, what are the pieces that they have put out to kind of get rid of? Um, and looking at what objects were valued and how and when, and kind of, you know, starting from the amphora being the most functional utilitarian object 4,000 years ago, used for storing your olive oil and your wine um, to now being these exquisite pieces that are given such a place of honour in, in museums and um, all the way down to you know trophies that are often the most badly designed, ugly, horrible things that are just imparted in so much, you know, like... 15, 30 guys fight over this object for, you know, an hour and a half and almost beat each other senseless just to get this kind of useless thing. But that actually doesn't mean anything apart from 
the value that's imparted upon it. Uh, down to um, kind of your common Bunnings bucket, which has been um, you know, designed somewhere, um, and it's almost the M4 kind of equivalent, and so they're actually they're clay buckets. They're, they're not, the handles are real handles, but um, they're made on a wheel. Um, and there's one out there if you want to have a look at one of the buckets out there. Um, so from there we move, okay, there's 10 minutes. Um, from there, okay, so in the, um, the residency, um, I am making, I'm basically continuing on this work and looking at um, the pot on plinth kind of thing. And so I'm making both vessels um, and then um, also making ceramic plinths for them to stand on. Um, and the one thing basically that inspired me and slammed me when I walked into this space was the colour that kind of just permeates everything. It's just like this vibrating colour. So um, in my studio I'm doing a whole series of glaze tests that will then and glazes. So all the pieces will be glazed in this kind of vibrant tapestry workshop glazes. Yeah, and that's basically it. I think. <laughs> <laughs>